Welcome to Down Ancient Trails, the online archaeology forum of the Sharma Center for Heritage Education India. Brush the dust off long forgotten thoughts. Slice through time and space. Listen to stories in stone. Whispers of voices lost in time. Build bridges across worlds. Curious minds reach out to the past. And travel down ancient trails. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Shanti Pago and your colleagues. Thanks a lot. I'm very pleased here, and I am also pleased to be part of these uh, uh, series uh, talks. So I'm going to share my uh, talk here. So, so everybody see the the my screen or my voice yes it's fine uh, yeah. okay. yes perfect yeah since a uh, uh, few years ago uh, i and uh, my colleagues my team uh, we have started a, a project in zagros mountains as you have the mentioned human evolution in the zagros mountains and recently, uh, this project has been supported by DFG from the uh, German Institute, Institute for uh, Research and also Neanderthal Museum, which I am at the moment based in. Uh, from the beginning, I would love to little bit talk about the study region, Zagros Mountains. And then uh, later I will uh, show some pictures about the previous research about politic and human evolution in this region and why this region is important and i will mention a couple of important sites and surveys region have been surveyed and some sites have been excavated and produced important um, finds concerning human evolution and then after that I will talk about the project which I and the, the team we are working together have started in Zagros Mountain, especially in Kermasha region. And then I will show some, some of the very important results we have got through uh, this uh, these uh, years. First of all, a little bit uh, about uh, geography or geology of Zagros Mountain. Zagros is a, is a huge Ge geographical feature in the Middle East. This, uh, this mountains, high mountains, is formed by convergent boundaries between Eurasian Plateau and Arabian Plateau, as you see in this, uh, with these uh, two um, fresh uh, arrows, I am showing this, uh, these boundaries uh, regions, and Zagros is located in this area. And, um, a big, uh, the, the, this system, this geological system is formed or produced by a subduction um, formation or process which is coming uh, through the north from uh, Arabian Plateau and subduction to this area and then the, the, the uplifting and the, the mountains is resulted of this subduction process. And as you see in down here, you have see a lot of folded areas and crashed zone uh, which some of the uh, peak mountains go until 4,000 meters and in general we have something between 2,500 until 4,000 meters high above sea level and this is a picture from the region and this uh, geological situation resulted to to have uh, quite a lot of pre precipitation as rain or as snow and 
from one point of view, we can call this, this region as a island of moisture. Since we, in this region, we get more than, in some areas, 600 uh, millimeters precipitation. So uh, if you compare it to the, to the adjacent regions like Mesopotamia or inner land of Iran, this area is quite um, dense with uh, vegetables, with, uh, uh, with forest and uh, quite uh, different uh, ecosystem from the different, uh, from the regions around it. And with this uh, geographical background, I would love to a little bit talk about the broad picture, which we have from the, uh, let's say, Eurasia. So uh, this, this map has been produced by Bay and colleagues in 2017. This map has been published in a, in a science, a Journal of Science in 2017. And we see in the, in the left map, the period before 60,000 years ago. And in the right map, we see the, the, the region after 60,000 years ago. So, uh, as you see, the, the area is very complicated. We have different uh, uh, populations are in this region. For example, on the north area, in this area, we see the Neanderthal occupation region. So from the Europe come to the, to, to the east until half of the Iranian plateau and to, toward the east. And then uh, at this area, we have Dinosova. But down here, um, the, the researcher believes that the archaic modern human have been moved from Africa toward Asia through, the, through these corridors, one of these corridors uh, toward this region. And uh, in the pretty much east, we do have archaic uh, Homo sapiens in this area with the green color. And then after uh, 60,000 years ago, the cultural landscape is a little bit changed from, from before 60,000 years ago. But we do have a city, the Neanderthals are here in this region. And then uh, Homo sapiens, modern human, let's say, have moved to the Eurasia toward the east. So uh, these maps, uh, have been produced based on a lot of information, which during 20 years ago, let's say, uh, based on the finds and discoveries in Saudi Arabia with a very great, um, let's say, uh, discoveries has, uh, are in Saudi Arabia by Michael Petralia and his teams, and also in India and the, uh, the other part of the Eurasia. But um, since my... Uh, let's say focus and interest is in this period, 60,000 years ago, between 60,000 years ago until 40,000 years ago. So uh, in this area, which Iran is located, we do see there are at least overlap of two group or two societies of Neanderthals and modern human. So that's why we think this area is important and we have started our project over there. So this is a, another picture, Let, uh, let's say it's a closer picture to the region uh, and uh, uh, the, the theories or hypotheses at the moment is uh, existed is we do have uh, archaic hu human, uh, uh, modern human, uh, excuse me, archaic uh, homo sapiens, probably around 120,000 years ago, they have uh, moved toward the north through um, Saudi Arabia, and then we do have uh, another hypothesis between 60 to 45,000 years ago, modern human moved from uh, e west toward Iranian plateau. And then, of course, based on the information we do have, uh, Neanderthals have moved down from north toward Iranian plateau, something like 80 to 60,000 years ago. And Zagros is located in the center of this region. I will uh, start with the first 
uh, important site in the Zagros Mountains. It's called Shani Der. Uh, it is located outside of Iranian Plateau, but in Iraqi Kurdistan, this site uh, has been excavated in 1950s by Professor Ralph Suliki, and during a couple of different seasons, uh, he was able to find more uh, around 10 Neanderthal skeleton in this cave. It's one of the very important sites in the uh, in the region. And then later, around uh, 2002, uh, excuse me, 2012 until to, until now, actually, the University of Cambridge have uh, with uh, with the leading of Professor Graham Barker, uh, have um, started to excavate and work in this site. And uh, recently they have found uh, also uh, another uh, part of Neanderthal skeleton. And actually I would love to show you um, one of the interesting um, pictures they have produced that recent publication they had uh, done and this is a part of Neanderthal skeleton in this site and a very interesting thing about this find is finding one uh, lithic artifact right in the grave which is one of the fantastic find from the Shanidar cave. So let's go back to a slide. Uh, another uh, interesting find in, in Zauros Mountain belonged to the Bisetun cave. This site uh, was excavated by Professor Carlton Kuhn from Pennsylvania University during 1949. Uh, this uh, rock shelter also is located in West Central Zagros Mountain of Iran. And uh, during his excavation, he found, uh, 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 let's say, Middle Paleolithic artifacts and a lot of fauna. And among the fauna, he has found a, a radius of uh, homonym. And then later, this uh, from the beginning, he has assume this, uh, this must be uh, belong to a Neanderthal, um, uh, 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 a skeleton of Neanderthal. And then later, Professor Trinkhaus and Big Larry has uh, re-studied this uh, material and they also confirm most probably this radius belongs to a Neanderthal. And then uh, in 2019, also in Kermanshah region, again, uh, a Neanderthal tooth from an uh, individual, something like six to ten years old, also uh, was found in a cave. Uh, but since the, the tooth has not uh, pulled out from the archaeological layer, uh, so the, the, the date of this tooth is not clear, but the, the researchers, uh, they believe this uh, tooth of Neanderthal must be belong between uh, 70 to 40,000 years ago. Another fantastic archaeological site in Kermanshah region and also in Western Zagros Mountain belong to Varvasi rock shelter. This site also excavated by uh, Bruce Ho uh, under direction of the Robert Redwood uh, team in, during 1960s. And the most important uh, about this site is uh, Varvasi is the, the first ever uh, rock shelter in Zagros Mountain, which has the whole sequence from the Middle Paleolithic un until Epipaleolithic. So uh, among the, the, the Paleolithic archaeologists, this site is always being referenced as the most important site, which uh, we do have information about whole uh, Paleolithic period, at least uh, during late Pal late Pleistocene period. Uh, another valley in Zagros region is called Khoramabad Valley. This this valley also has been targeted by uh, archaeologists during ninety during 
the decades of 1960. Uh, for example, Hall and Flannery, they have uh, surveyed there, they did excavation in this area. And then later, in last 10 years ago, Professor um, Oat also started to work there and excavated a couple of sites over there and they produce quite a lot of interesting information about uh, middle politic, about upper politic and epipolitic in this area. And then uh, during um, uh, recent years, also another Iranian archeologist called uh, Dr. Behruz Bazgir has excavated another cave site called Kaldar Cave. Uh, this is a running project and also uh, he and his teams produced quite a lot of interesting information about uh, Neanderthal occupation in this site and about uh, later Homo sapiens occupations and settlements in uh, Khurramabad Valley. So we go a little bit, move down to the southern Zagros Mountains. Another project was started by Tübingen University from Germany. I and Dr. Elham Qasidian were part of this project and actually we have done our PhD uh, in this project from Tübingen University. We have done an uh, intensive survey in this region and we excavated a cave site under supervision of Professor Nicholas Connard from Tübingen University. And this site also produced uh, intensive occupation of modern human and uh, the, the excavation went down more than two and a half meters. And uh, as we see, the, the lithic artifacts from this site are typical our Paleolithic lithic from Zagros Mountains. And the date goes back uh, the, the base of the our Paleolithic part so far, based on the latest information, it's around 42,000 years ago. Well, uh, if we little bit also go to the Southern Zagros Mountains in Marvdash region, there is another um, excavation and research which has been done by Professor Michael Rosenberg during 1917s and then later he has published uh, his results in during 1985. Uh, uh, he has excavated a cave called Ashkaft Gavi. This site, as you see, the, pro the profile of that also goes to at least Upper Paleolithic, although he, ha he claimed he has found Mosterian artifact from the Middle Paleolithic, but since the material were too little and also uh, he couldn't find enough dates for the lower layers, so we are not sure about this period, but we know at least from the Upper Paleolithic people, they used this cave and later on, of course, during the Upper Paleolithic and Epipaleolithic, people have also used this site. Uh, the most fantastic uh, information about this site, which actually a few years ago, in 2009 actually published by Scott and Marianne, they have re-studied the fauna from this site. They found some homonin remains as uh, with cut marks and since some of these bones were burned, they claimed, they assumed probably we have cannibalism activities in this site, which was very interesting. But since the, uh, we do not have much information about the dates of this period, the people they believe probably belong to our Paleolithic or maybe a little bit later during the Abbey Paleolithic. So these uh, were the, the most important excavation and uh, results uh, based on previous studies. And in 2017, 17, a, a team from Oxford University, they have, let's say, made a summary of what we have in the Zagros Mountains. And this team, uh, which led by uh, uh, Valdivia, and they published a paper in Journal of Human Evolution in 2017, they have put all the information together. They were interested, first of all, 
the period from the middle to our politic transition, when it happened, and then they wanted to know when Mosterian culture has been uh, appeared in the region and when the upper politic uh, culture uh, appeared in this region and its boundary and transition from these two period. So they were interested and then they collected all the information from the different key sites like Shanidar Cave, like Yafte, Kobe Cave, Kaldar Cave and Qarabuf. So they put all the information together and uh, that's very interesting result they have got. They believe the start boundary of our politic uh, in Zagros mountain is around, uh, let's say, 40, between 40 to 45,000 years ago with 68 uh, probability, percent probability. And with 95 percent probability, it would be something between 40 to 56,000 years ago. As you see, is a, the quality of picture is a little bit low. Sorry about that, but it's, it's written here. So uh, based on their result, uh, we can say um, uh, probably the modern human uh, populations have entered Zagros mountain. Since the Qarabuf is in pretty much in the southern Zagros mountains and Shanidar cave in the north, so since the Qarabuf in, is located in the southern part, so probably modern humans have entered the Zagros mountain from the south, from the southern region, uh, something between 42,000 to 45,000 years ago. And uh, also they believe this is the period that uh, middle politics in this region has stopped. So let's say Neanderthal has disappeared uh, a little bit uh, before 42, 43,000 years ago. So these uh, were all information uh, we needed to understand what is the Zagros mountain situation and uh, what is the role of this geological or geographical um, region in the world of prehistory, in the world of politic archaeology. So based on this, um, these ideas, uh, as I already said, I and uh, my team have started a new project. It's called Kermanshah Region Project. Uh, under the, the, the project of human evolution in the Zagros Mountains in Kermansha region, in West Central Zagros Mountain, in this area. First of all, we have started to make an intensive survey in this region. Uh, as you see in the profile down here, the region is has a different or diversity of eco ecosystem or ecology from pretty much low area like 500 meters above sea level until 3000 meters above sea level in 100 kilometers. So the, the area is around 100 kilometers uh, long and something like 80 kilometers wide. In this region, of course, there were other people, other researchers uh, already they have done a lot of surveys, a lot of excavations, but we have added some more information. And during uh, three years of surveys, we have done in 2013 and 2014, we have found more than 260 caves and rock shelters in this region. And uh, at least 8,000 lithic artifacts we have collected in the front on the slopes of these caves and rock shelters. So among these finds, just few of them are open air sites for different geomorphological reasons. The open air sites are uh, absent. We, can, we couldn't find most, many of them since of, because of erosion, because of accumulation systems and these things. But the caves are there, fortunately, and since the, the region is pretty much a right region, we could find 
lithic artifact on the slopes inside of the caves. So there were enough information to collect uh, in this project. Uh, in this uh, region, we have divided it into four uh, ecological zones from A here until zone D there. So based on topography, based on the uh, uh, climate, we have uh, divided this region in these four areas. And uh, the region is pretty much a karstic uh, topography. We have a lot of caves. There are a lot of uh, small and big, large lakes in this region. Uh, many rivers, permanent rivers are there. Many, many different uh, small and large uh, springs. As I said, we do have, we have a flat, um, let's say, uh, intermountain plains and very sharp and uh, steep uh, slopes. So uh, it is a, let's say, ideal ecosystem for human occupation. Uh, during our surveys, we have found uh, many also uh, middle politic characteristics by Levalois uh, technology, and also during the middle politic, and then we had a typical upper paleolithic laminar uh, blade production. And during epipaleolithic, we had also typical bladelet production. The raw material from the re this region uh, are belong to, uh, mostly belong to radiolarite, which the, 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 the main source of um, lithics are based on this type of uh, stones and with the different colors of light brown to dark brown and even red color. And uh, during the, the study of, let's say attributed analysis of the lithic artifact from the different areas, we try to, first of all, understand the dynamic population of the middle politic and upper politic and upper politic in this region. And uh, so the quality of these pictures are unfortunately are not very good, but just I wanted to show how we have studied these 8,000 lithic artifacts and we have categorized them in different aspects uh, like cores, like tools and technology, typology, all these, uh, these analysis which was needed, we have done. And here we see uh, first analysis, a GIS analysis we have done is, uh, is a density analysis. We try to understand which area uh, has been more used by human. And based on the legend down here, site density, you see, in a couple of areas in this region, this region, and also in this area, we, you see we have much more sites are located, let's say sites which have been used by human are located. So they are at least in four areas we have seen. And then another analysis we have done based on kernel density analysis, we put all the information to the database uh, based, on the, based on the periods of lithic artifact and based on the localities and uh, the machine computer has produced these maps. These are actually are four maps, A, B, C, and D, based on periods and also locality. And the first map shows the probably lower paleolithic occupations, which are just in three areas, or let's say late uh, lower paleolithic or early middle paleolithic occupation. They are very little, just in three areas we have found those type of lithic artifact. In the second one, uh, map number B, we see uh, the middle politic occupations, pure, let's say, Mostrian artifacts, which are known in Zagros Mountain as a middle politic occupation. We do see in this region, in this valley, we have quite a uh, good number of uh, middle politic occupations. And then in uh, map C, 
we have just uh, extract information about the upper politic occupations. We see little bit uh, the area are compared to the middle politic uh, are more used, different regions are used by upper politic societies, but still we have in two regions Concentr good high number of concentrations in this area and this area. And in the final map, which is a combination of map B and map C, we wanted to see uh, in which area we do have a combination of middle politic and upper politic occupations. Since the the aim of our project was understanding of transition from middle politic to upper politic. So we wanted to see in which area the probability of the occupation of these two groups are higher. And then we ended up with this region in, uh, uh, let's say, in north part of Zagros, uh, north part of Kermanshah Valley. This valley is called Nauderban. This is a better picture of the valley. Uh, this picture has, uh, I, I took this picture in 2017 during the spring time, which the river is pretty much full. And still we do see the snow on the mountains, but the bottom of the valley is completely green. So the region is pretty much wet. Uh, during the uh, winter, we do have a lot of uh, snow there. Summer is very hot, up to 40, 45 degrees, Celsius degrees. And uh, the area, the, the valley is very flat. Of course, it's nowadays is agricultural uh, activities made it much more flatter, but we assume it was already during the Pleistocene also was flat. We do not know anything about the vegetation during the Paleolithic, unfortunately, but we are working on that. Different teams are working on the paleontological studies to understand the vegetational history from the Pleistocene, late Pleistocene period. But this is a picture of the region and uh, we see pretty much diverse uh, ecology or ecosystem from this area. If we go up to the um, to the upper part of the mountains until to 3,000 meters, we see um, very cold area. And down there, we do have a, um, let's say, um, something like 20, 30 percent of trees, especially oaks and wild pistachios. And down here, we do have grasses. The first excavation we have uh, done in the region, it was in 2015 in a cave called Glimgush. We have chosen this cave in this region to test the situation. And this cave is a pretty much big cave actually. It's 140 meters long, this cave. And from the end, it opens to the landscape and here is the entrance and the entrance is toward northeast and in this area we have made a test trench for a square meter and we, we went down like two meters deep. This is the area we have excavated in 2015. In this excavation we got at least for a geological layer with uh, three archaeological horizons. And if we go down here in this part, uh, it was pretty much a steel uh, layer. We couldn't find much information, their data, no bones, no artifacts, and then we stopped in this area. And then in the middle part, in the geological horizon tree, we had the uh, ashy layer, pretty much dense. We called it fireplace. Uh, and then we have uh, geological layer two, 
which in the lower part of that, we had also upper Paleolithic occupations. At the upper part of that, we had, uh, in this area, we had Bronze Age. And then geological horizon first is just a mix of recent uh, material. It's very recent, it's a whole um, let's say, deposits. So the cave, uh, from the beginning, we believed uh, this cave must, uh, has been used quite intensive, but unfortunately the excavation showed the completely uh, opposite of our idea. So altogether we found uh, not more than 150 lithic artifacts in these two meters deep. But fortunately, the stratigraphy was quite good enough and then we could understand the history of occupation in this site. So in the graph on the left side, we see the number of artifacts uh, and uh, different uh, types of the lithic artifacts are shown with the different uh, colors like flake, blade, bladelet, and SD. And in the area which is fireplace is located in this region, in this area, we do have, uh, have quite a lot of uh, higher number of lithic artifacts, as you see in this area. So it is, it is located in the middle of uh, geological horizon three. So these are the, some of the examples from the lithic artifact we have found in this layer, which also uh, typical uh, upper Paleolithic uh, occupations and uh, let's say blade and bladelet productions. Uh, we couldn't find any middle Paleolithic in this uh, trench, but we assume probably if we ex continue with our excavation, uh, deeper than two meters, probably we find uh, middle politic, and then uh, we have left the project for future. So the the dates also was pretty much good. It was reasonable uh, from the down uh, to up. Uh, we do see. Uh, first of all, I have to say the the the, the dates. Uh, have been done, uh, carried out by Oxford University uh, under uh, direction of Professor Tom Hyam from Oxford University. And uh, the bottom of the layer uh, three, uh, we have uh, dates uh, with something like 42,000 years ago. Uh, but if you want to little bit uh, be precise, uh, with 68% of probability, it must be 41,000 years ago in this area. And then later, uh, in the middle of uh, geological horizon three, we have between 34 to 36,000 years ago until, uh, let's say, 33,000 years ago. And the Bronze Age, which I, we didn't show it here in this cup, we have uh, between 5,000 to 3,000 years ago uh, occupation. So it has been dated in uh, between five to 3,000 years ago. So uh, if I want to add some information about this uh, excavation, uh, we can see uh, the, the climatic period of Heinrich IV is located here. So apparently uh, after 40,000 years ago, we have a little bit gap of human occupation um, uh, probably during this, this time, this time, during this time after Heinrich IV, uh, uh, the region probably became colder and we have a gap in this period. But during Heinrich IV, we have an intensive occupation and then uh, when the, the coldness gone around late Pleistocene, something like 40, 34 to 35,000 years ago, again, people came back to the site and they used it. So we have a, probably a short gap between these two periods in this site. But uh, I need to, to say uh, the cave, as I said, it's oriented to the north uh, east, so it doesn't get that much 
let's say uh, sun and heat so probably it was not that much attractive for the people to use this site okay let's go to another uh, excavation we had uh, in 2016 until 2018 three seasons we excavated in another site it's called Bao Yawan rock shelter this is a this rock shelter here in this picture we see it, it's our there and uh, this is 50 meters high uh, rock and more than 200 meters long and it's very close to the road this road goes from the Kermansha city to the Kamyaran city which is like 30 kilometers to the north uh, east and so something like 15 meters far from the road the accessibility was very easy to go there and I mean from the logistical point of view and close to this uh, rock shelter we have a pond here like 70 meters away there is a permanent lake or pond and it's a karstic uh, spring and uh, based on the information I will tell you about it this pond probably always was there at least during the middle Paleolithic period so in 2016, we have started uh, to work in this site and uh, until 2018, during three seasons, we have dug four meters and half, four and a half meters in this site. And these are some of the pictures from the uh, lithic artifact from the different periods of uh, occupations. This site has produced um, lithic artifact from the middle Paleolithic until epipaleolithic. So these on the right are the middle Paleolithic artifacts. In this area we have our Paleolithic artifacts, also typical from the upper Paleolithic period. And here also a very typical Zagros Mosterian, which we believed, and these belong to Neanderthals occupation. And these are epipaleolithic uh, blade and bladelets production we do have and uh, geometric artifact we do have also have been found in many areas in Zagos mountains. Among the deletic artifact one of them was very interesting because still we are working on that we have found some organic material on this artifact in this area and still uh, a colleague from Bologna University is working on that to understand which type of organic material is on this lithic artifact. So this is the drawing of the artifact, conversion scraper, we do have side scraper, limas, we have retouched flakes, quite a lot of them, and level of course also very small one we do have in this site. So let's talk a little bit about the a stratigraphy of this site. As I said, uh, we have uh, opened two trenches, one uh, on the edge of the eastern part and one on the west. Altogether, 20 square meters have been, we have opened. In this one, in this area, the excavation went down four meters and a half. We have five geological horizon. The geological horizon number five is the thicker one, but still we couldn't reach the bedrock. We hope it goes down in the future. And we have uh, layer four, three, two, and one. Among these five geological horizon, we have three archeological periods. Middle Paleolithic, which is started from the uh, lower uh, layer from here up to here up to middle of uh, geological horizon two. And from the middle of geological horizon two up to um, here, we have uh, upper Paleolithic and something like between 10 to 20 centimeters on the pretty much surface, we have epipaleolithic period. We have uh, collected charcoals for datings, also these uh, dates 
have done by two different institutes, actually three different in institutes, one of them from Beta in London, one, uh, two of them are coming from Oxford University, and the rest of them are done by Mannheim University. And uh, altogether we have uh, 12 samples uh, dated. <clears throat> Among the excavation, we have found also in, on the top of the layer five, a Neanderthal remain. Uh, just I have to say, uh, unfortunately, I cannot go much to the detail of this find, this physical remain, since the, pub, the, the paper has not been published. We are waiting, hopefully soon we will be published. But uh, since I had a, uh, we hadn't made a deal with the publisher, we are not allowed to go to the detail of this uh, find. But uh, it's a physical remain of Neanderthal over here. And then uh, we are sure that the lithic artifact from the Middle Paleolithic part belong to the Neanderthal populations. So, uh, based on the lithic analysis, lithic attributed analysis and technotypology, uh, uh, I didn't, I think I, I forgot to say we have f recovered more than 10,000 lithic artifacts from these three, per, uh, three seasons. And the, the study of the lithic artifacts are finished. And this graph shows the density of the different types of uh, artifacts. Uh, lithic artifacts we have in, from this side. And this, the first column is flake, and then blade, Mosterian side scraper as, a, as a one of the indicator from the Middle Paleolithic, convergent scraper, also indicator of Middle Paleolithic and lithic density. We have combined all this information and the result of this information are appeared in the right part. And the most interesting things about this, what we do have in the middle of geological horizon five, we have pretty much density of occupation. It means people, they have used this rock shelter in this period pretty much. And then it goes down. So these people, these people are Neanderthals. So we are sure these people are Neanderthals. So it goes down, but still they are there. But the, the, the population became very less than what they were already in this, in this region. But still they are there. And in the middle of, uh, in the lower part of geological horizon two, the upper Paleolithic artifacts are appeared. And then we have uh, 60 centimeters of overlapping of two different cultural um, occupations from the middle and upper Paleolithic in this area. And the physical remain of the Neanderthal is located in this area. So it means uh, still Neanderthals were around in this region from here until here. And then eventually in this area, which is in the middle of geological horizon to the middle Paleolithic or Neanderthal population completely disappeared. And then this area is exactly equivalent with the higher density of uh, artifacts from the upper Paleolithic, which shows probably the, the modern human population went quite up until here. And then uh, it goes down. So this goes down because of the unfortunately and the top of the layers, probably we do have quite a lot of erosion and maybe erosion or site formation processes were the reasons we do not have much more our Paleolithic uh, occupations. And then after that, we have epipaleolithic occupations. So let's go to the uh, it dates from this site. We have C in this area, which is the, uh, we have the Neanderthal remain in this area. 
it it is has been dated between 40 to 45,000 years ago with uh, 68 percent of probability and then uh, still the upper the middle paleolithic layer are dated still uh, something between 40 to 42,000 years ago and then a seal in this area, which is goes beyond the 40,000 years ago, something like 39,000 years ago, still we do have Middle Paleolithic artifact in this area. And then in 35,000 years ago, until 33,000 years ago, we have Upper Paleolithic. But this area is the most important area, which we are claiming maybe we have overlap of two groups of Neanderthal and Homo sapiens in this region. But we don't mean that probably they have seen each other in this area. Just we claim probably the site has been used by them, these two groups, in a different maybe seasons. So that's the only information at the moment we have. And also we see the this time uh, 40,000 years ago, a little bit before 14,000 ago, is equivalent with the Heinrich IV period, which is which shows the, the war period in Zagros Mountains. And then we have a peak of cold period immediately after that. And then we have quite a lot of fluctuations until recent. But uh, apparently the site has been quite used by different people all around the, this period from the Heinrich for until recent. So one of the reasons maybe we believe the site has been used based on this data and also as you saw the rock shelter is close to the to the pond to the water source there are a lot of raw material around it and the strategic loca locality of that is quite important so probably it was a very attractive uh, site to be used by different people. So now I will a uh, little bit speak about the, the fauna from this site. Uh, Bao Yuan Rockstar has a very rich uh, fauna, fortunately. All, also, uh, we were uh, lucky to find fauna with lithic artifact together, which shows the hunting activity very clearly. Uh, if I want uh, to give you, oh, sorry. If I want to give you a broad picture, what we have from a different period. In this graph, we see uh, most of the fauna remains from the lower part belong to the large sized mammals, including equid, including aurochs, and also uh, wild goat, wild sheep, we do have in the lower part, and then when we go a little bit to the to the northern part, let's say upper part of the, the layer, eventually the the size of the mammals uh, were have been hunted, getting a smaller and a smaller, from like red fox, European red fox, partridge. We do have different type of birds. Uh, so this also this pattern from the side we have it's pretty much match with the pattern of the other part, other excavation in the Zagos Mountains. Like, let's say Neanderthals hunted larger animals and the Homo sapiens hunted smaller animals. But the most interesting and very new, let's say, data or information about uh, Zagros Mountain, which we have produced, quite a lot of European freshwater turtles we have found in the lower part of the excavation in the middle Paleolithic period. So this is very interesting. Uh, of course, we do have them, quite a lot of them hunted by, uh, we have uh, a lot of, uh, of this data information in Europe and also in Levant, in Levant region, but in Zagos mountain is very much new. We didn't know uh, also uh, the Neanderthals have focused in this type of uh, diet and um, most probably uh, the pond close to the to close to the rock shelter uh, which even now a lot of these animals are living was um, attracted neanderthal to live there to hunt them and to use them 
and uh, we have so far uh, more than 100 pieces of the shells from uh, turtle uh, and also from the shells different area from the from the belly part and from the from the uh, from the back part and we are working on that to see uh, how they have uh, cooked it very interesting so there are different hypotheses about cooking this this animal so that was a uh, another interesting uh, find from this site so if i want to make a conclusion i think i am at a boat uh, to finish my f hour of talk so uh, the conclusion is uh, first of all the the neanderthals of kermanshah and also the bowie on rock shelter let's say is the most southeastern ever found of neanderthals until now so it's exactly it's on the boundary maybe this boundary goes a little bit further down but so far the find here is the southeastern uh, neanderthal we do have we do have uh, also in the uh, uh, central asia in the east in levant in the south southern up even southern than here but in this region uh, let's say Baoyewan Neanderthal and also the other two Neanderthal from Bisutun Cave and from Western Cave are the south, southern Neanderthal in Iranian plateau. So that's uh, for itself is an interesting find. And also uh, another find, at least from the Baoyewan rock shelter I have written here, is the archaeological evidence reveals that the Neanderthal population has been decreased before. Uh, modern human uh, arriving to the region so so that's very interesting because we know about the, uh, the there are different hypotheses about the neanderthal uh, uh, disappearing uh, people are hypo they gave different ideas for example um, for example admixture is one of the uh, one of the hypotheses, another hypothesis is a population size and different hypotheses we do have, disease and different things. And uh, now we can prove in, based on the Bawiyo and Rakshatar, we can prove that the, the population of Neanderthals has already decreased before modern human arrived to the region. So that's very important. So we now, when modern human arrived to the region, the Neanderthal population was too little and uh, so another uh, information we produced is this population decrease probably uh, is because of the the climate condition during the in layer geological layer three probably in um, a little bit after Heinrich IV sounds like 39,000 years ago, even 40,000 years ago, we had a very cold period. And most probably also many, the main food, the main source of the Neanderthal uh, societies have been gone toward Southern region, toward Western region, we don't know. So that's why uh, the population decreased. So we believe the climate was the reason for the population decrease, yeah. And the last <coughs> information we have produced here is the we suggest probably um, uh, in Kermansha region uh, in the same time between 39 to 42,000 years ago, probably two different um, groups of Neanderthal and modern human have occupied or at least visited this region. So Kermansha can be one of those candidate area that the admixture process were happened. And uh, at the end of my talk, I would love to thank the teams, fantastic teams that uh, we are to, uh, working together. This is a picture of them. Some of them are, some of them are uh, PhD students in different universities uh, around the world. Some of them are master of uh, archaeology, and they helped me a lot during this excavation, and really I thank them. And with this slide, I want to say thank you very much for your time.